Hey everyone, welcome back, or if you're just joining us, welcome to KSSP Podcast. I'm Spencer. I'm Katie. Today we're going to be discussing MDMA in this episode. So first we'll start off with this picture here from the National Institute on Drug Abuse. Uh, These are just a list of the brain areas affected by ecstasy, and then they're color-coded here. So we've got the neocortex, the hypothalamus, basal ganglia, amygdala, and the hippocampus are all affected there. The typical route of administration, or routes of administration include, are, you know, typically either oral, so like either you take a pill or you mix powder with water, or otherwise uh, you're going to People might snort it as well. So that's how people typically use it. And then we'll go over some of the pharmacology of MDMA. So MDMA increases the amount of serotonin in synaptic clefts by inhibiting serotonin's uptake. And it also directly releases it from the neurons. MDMA binds to various serotonin receptors and activates them in excess, leading to MDMA intoxication. It also induces significant norepinephrine release. And then extracellular MDMA acts as a reuptake inhibitor on serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine transporters. Its efficiency is highest towards the norepinephrine and serotonin ones. MDMA induces serotonin transporter reversal, leading to serotonin release. So basically, MDMA seems to increase the amount of serotonin and norepinephrine mainly in your system. And then also cortisol, prolactin, and oxytocin quantities in blood serum can also increase with MDMA use. So once again, we've got another article from the NIH. These are just potential acute adverse health effects. So it's a, a potential side effects uh, would be marked rise in the body temperature, hyperthermia, dehydration, electrolyte or sodium imbalance, uh, high blood pressure or hypertension, involuntary jaw clenching and teeth grinding, muscle or joint stiffness, lack of appetite, illogical or disorganized thoughts, restless legs, nausea, hot flashes or chills, headaches, sweating, faintness, panic attacks, loss of consciousness, seizures, kidney failure, and swelling of the brain. And then there's potential longer-term health effects. So including those observed days or weeks post-MDMA use. Uh, There's arrhythmia or irregular heartbeat and heart damage as possible, Um, irritability, depression, impulsivity, impaired attention and memory, anxiety, aggression, sleep disturbances, concentration difficulties, lack of appetite, heart disease, and decreased cognitive function. Then, yeah, so now we're gonna talk about MDMA-assisted therapy for PTSD. Um, And then this is from a WebMD article. Really quick here, we're just going to read a couple parts of this. So PTSD may cause memories to pop up as flashbacks or nightmares and force some people to relive terrifying moments. Severe PTSD can also lead to suicide. Um, There is no medication to treat PTSD itself, but some medicines may ease symptoms. So treatments like talk therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy can also help. But almost a third of people drop out of therapy and and, and up to 58% still have PTSD symptoms after they finish. And this is often because like if you have PTSD, like once you go to therapy and you start to talk about it, the PTSD symptoms tend to get worse before they get better. So that that's just why a lot of people drop out of therapy and still have the symptoms. And sometimes it even makes them worse if they, depending on the type of therapy and when they drop out of it, like in their healing process. 
And then this is where MDMA comes in. So experts have found that when people with PTSD are given a certain amount of MDMA in a clinical setting, it helps them open up so they can work through traumatic events. And MDMA itself is not approved for legal use because of its history as a recreational drug with the potential for harm, abuse, and addiction. I mean, you know, that's not really why it's illegal, but we already talked about that on Monday. Um, and since 2017, the FDA has deemed the drug's beneficial effects on PTSD symptoms to be a breakthrough therapy. So that's just, that's what the FDA even said. So some other effects can include the feelings of empathy, self-awareness, sensory pleasure, more energy, less anxiety, ability to open up about emotions and differences in how you see time and space. And then I just have a little kind of image here that goes over how MDMA can help certain areas for like MDMA couples therapy so we're just gonna and some of them are like the areas of focus seem to be this like they're, they're probably different mechanisms from like for ptsd but we're just gonna go over them and how they could help with couples therapy and i guess they maybe have some similarities but anyways so first area of focus empathy and how MDMA supports. So oxytocin release helps increase interpersonal focus, feelings of interpersonal trust, and social affiliation. MDMA associated with seeing others as empathetic and caring and increasing emotional empathy beyond oxytocin alone. So their proposed therapeutic interventions to facilitate is centering both people's experiences, sharing of feelings. So communication MDMA is associated with greater interpersonal focus and language reduction in re reactivity to angry facial expressions and greater reward in happy faces. So that could present and practice skills of sharing and listening with both negative and positive content. Perception of social connection and support, reduction in feeling of social pain, decreased feelings of threat, increased feelings of interpersonal trust, increased identification of pro-social feelings, Highlight strength in couples' interactions. Remind in integration to reduce the likelihood of returning to old patterns after MDMA sessions. Can help with non-avoidance. MDMA assists in fear attenuation, allowing for approach of difficult experiences and memories. It explains why non-avoidance is helpful while difficult initially is supportive of growth of relationship to not allow difficulties to expand or root over time. Openness. MDMA can assist in increased openness to experience and decrease neuroticism. The ability to engage in interactions may be supported by the release of cortisol and paired with oxytocin. That could create shared intentions and establishing as a value to bring through the process. Attachment slash safety, decreased feelings of threat, increased feelings of interpersonal trust. Skills to engage in difficult conversations, take breaks and re-engage, creating a template for future experiences. Bonding or social intimacy. So MDMA, oxytocin, which MDMA causes to release, supports feelings of social bonding. MDMA helps increase cooperation and feelings of trustworthiness. It increased experience of social intimacy following MDMA-assisted couple therapy. So couples engaging in the whole process together. And then the last one, relationship satisfaction. Improved relationship satisfaction, decreased distress in MDMA-assisted couple therapy and encouraging shared experiences, engagement together in the therapeutic process. And that is just some of the ways that they have seen that so far it seems MDMA can be helpful in couples therapy. Yeah, so that was our episode on MDMA. And you can join us next time as we talk about benzodiazepines. And as always, you can leave a comment below if you have a topic you want to hear us talk about in future episodes. You can reach out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. And we occasionally Twitch live streams, so you can check us out there. And don't forget to give this video a like.
like as well as follow or subscribe to our other social media accounts and turn on notifications so that you get notified when our new content comes out. Otherwise, we will see everyone in the next video.